Namaste. So, in this series on Mahabhava, we are gradually analyzing the different phases of the development of bhava, transcendental emotion. And this is experienced by the devotees in their various pastimes with their Ishtadevata. Now, we're using as a text Rupa Goswami's Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which is a marvelous book. It only has one flaw, <laughs> and it's a big one. It only treats devotion to Krishna. But Krishna is only one of so many different forms of the Godhead. Brahman expands in many different forms, actually unlimited different forms. <clears throat> and these forms are all worshipable in different moods. So if we look around the world, there are many different cults and sects and religions and teachings, all approaching the Supreme in a different way. These principles of bhava bhakti are applicable to all of them not just one form, but all forms of the Supreme, because they are equivalent. So, in the beginning we talked about sadhana bhakti, but sadhana bhakti isn't really pure bhakti. It's devotional service in practice. It's not spontaneous. It comes from rules and regulations, and so it's really part of karma yoga. Bhakti yoga begins when spontaneous love arises in the heart. Actually, <laughs> we call spontaneous love, but there isn't any other kind of love. Real love is always spontaneous. It's never forced or artificial. It's never, it, it cannot be commanded or ordered or <laughs> invoked by rules and regulations. So bhava bhakti, devotional service in ecstatic love, is the real bhakti. And so we are then going through the five types of bhavas, vibhava or causes of ecstatic love, anubhava or symptoms of ecstatic love, Sattvika bhava, <clears throat> when those symptoms become overwhelming. Vyabhachari bhava, which is the apparently contradictory symptoms that uh, sharpen and increase the poignancy of these uh, devotional feelings. And the sthai bhava, which is the steady or even eternal devotional mood in the heart of the devotee. So today, we're going to take a look at Vibhava. Vibhava is the cause of relishing rati, or ecstatic emotions, with the Ishtadevata. Now the structure of Vibhava is that it has a alambana, or support, of two kinds. The bhakta, or devotee, who is the ashraya, or the subject of devotional love, and the ishtadevata, which is the ashrita, or the object of devotional love. And uh, within these supports, there are various udipana, stimuli, that give rise to the ecstatic symptoms and emotions of bhava. Now, what are these stimuli? Basically, they are the exalted qualities of the Ishtadevata, whether in a male or female form, whether as an avatar or Leela avatar, Yuga avatar, or any of the other classifications of forms of the Supreme. And basically, the difference between the Supreme Lord and, let's say, a demigod 
is that each of the forms of the Supreme, whether male or female, whether Shiva or Vishnu or any other form of God, has 64 basic qualities. And those 64 qualities act as stimuli for the development of ecstatic love. And what are they? He is always situated in his eternal form. He is omniscient, forever young, has a body made from condensed eternity, and possesses all siddhis. He has inconceivable great energies, he is the form of creation, expanding over tens of millions of universes. He is the source of the numerous avatars. He rewards even the enemies he kills and attracts the atmaramas, the self-satisfied devotees. In him reside truthfulness, cleanliness, compassion, control of anger, self-satisfaction, straightforwardness, steadiness of mind, control of the senses, responsibility, equity, tolerance, equanimity, faithfulness, knowledge, absence of attachment, leadership, chivalry, influence, the power to make everything possible, discharge of proper duty, complete independence, dexterity, fullness of all beauty, serenity, kind-heartedness, ingenuity, gentility, magnanimity, determination, perfection in all knowledge, proper execution, possession of all objects of enjoyment, joyfulness, immovability, fidelity, fame, worship, pridelessness, unlimited being, eternity, and many other eternal transcendental qualities. That's our God. Now, even though I've used the male pronoun here, these qualities apply equally well to the female or f feminine forms of God, goddess as the mother and so on. So in all cases, the worshipable God or deity is full of all kinds of qualities. And when we perceive these qualities, then arises in the heart automatically, without effort, this vibhava, this ecstatic love. So in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, in the second wave of the Southern Ocean, there is a long list of shlokas from various Vedic literatures uh, explaining or giving examples of these qualities. But since we don't have time for that, <laughs> you can read it yourself. There's a uh, link in the video description to download Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, and you should read it with the caveat that these qualities and pastimes and feelings of ecstatic love apply to all incarnations or all forms of the Godhead, not only Krishna. So instead of going through this long list, <laughs> which is out of scope for our series here, let's just talk about some simple examples. For example, Anytime you're reading the scripture and you come across a passage that is particularly beautiful or astonishing, uh, something that just is amazing, blows your mind, and or leads to a big cognition, such as, oh, that's why this is the way it is, and so on. Uh, this is Vibhava. You're becoming aware of some of these transcendental qualities of the God, the Godhead, the Supreme, in any form. And this gives rise to a feeling of wonder, astonishment, amazement, 
excitement even. I can recall so many times studying in scriptures and come across an answer to a question I had asked years ago and couldn't find the answer for and feeling so joyful that, oh, here's the answer to all these questions. Or just an awareness of God's beauty and amazing qualities, huh? compassion, karuna. For example, since I began worshiping the goddess, slowly, slowly, my health has improved. And oh, here's a great example. <laughs> Almost a year ago, something happened. I'm not sure exactly what. And my lower back went out and I started getting sciatica pain, which if you've never had it is really annoying. <laughs> and everything I tried, even chiropractic treatments, so they only lasted a few days and then it came back. And different exercises and diet and whatnot, just, you know, wouldn't do anything. So when I came up here um, in the mountains, my friend took me to one big Shiva temple and uh, Jageshwar, it's one of the Jyotilingas, one of the most important and powerful temples in India. So I went there, took darshan, and then I bathed in the Ghat. Now this, this is like a mountain stream, you know, very cold water. But somehow <laughs> I got into it. You're supposed to go in three times. Huh? And then uh, when you come out, you feel so much better. It's amazing. That pure cold water. And so I went in, took bath, came out, and I noticed no back pain. It was just gone. And it hasn't come back. So, I mean, of course, I'm doing yoga every day and everything, you know, to uh, help with the healing. But still, it's an amazing blessing. And when you get a blessing like that, you become so thankful, so grateful. Like Ma Durga Kamakshi appears in my dreams. She is like an ordinary friend, but very close friend. But she doesn't want or need any special formality or adoration or anything like that. She's just my friend. And she shows me things, teaches me, and gives blessing, even in dreams. Now, this gives rise to a kind of familiarity and closeness that you cannot find in formal worship. And these feelings of relatedness to the goddess are far more powerful than the formal feelings of devotion from ritualistic worship. Uh, this is what leads to true love of Godhead. When we engage through devotional service, and we reach the stage of bhava bhakti, and the Lord in his or her forms begins to interact and respond. And this gives rise to deep feelings of satisfaction and gratitude, and of course, intense feelings of love. And this is the origin, then, of the ecstatic symptoms that we're going to be discussing in the next several episodes. Aung Tatsat Aung Shakti Aung